Determine the angle between the following vectors. Here we are given vector u, defined by the components 4, 3, 5, and vector v, defined by the components 4, negative 6, negative 2. So, in order to compute the angle between these vectors, we're going to need to use the geometric representation of the dot product. So, let's begin by recalling the formula. So, we know that the magnitude of vector u multiplied by the magnitude of vector v multiplied by cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of u and v. Now, our job or goal here is to solve for theta. So let's do so algebraically. We can divide both sides of this equation by the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v, which leaves us with cosine of theta is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v. And then taking the inverse cosine of both sides, we're left with theta is equal to arc cosine of the dot product of u and v divided by the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v. So this is the formula that we're going to be using to find the angle. So let's think about the argument of our arc cosine here and do these calculations out piece by piece. So we can start with the dot product. We want to find vector u dot vector v. So this is going to be, we have 4, 3, 5, and we're dotting this vector with 4, negative 6, negative 2. So 4 times 4 gives us 16. 3 times minus 6 gives us negative 18. And then we have 5 multiplied by negative 2, which leaves us with minus 10. So we have negative 28 plus 16, which leaves us with negative 12. So we'll come back to this momentarily. Let's now think about the magnitude of vector u and the magnitude of vector v. So starting with the magnitude of vector u, we use our distance formula. So we have the square root of 16 plus 9 plus 25. So we have 25 plus 25, which leaves us with the square root of 50. And now notice we have a perfect square within these factors. We know that 50 is equivalent to 2 times 25. So, of course, we want to simplify this to 5 times the square root of 2. Similarly, we want to compute the magnitude of vector v. So, we have the square root of 16 plus 36 plus 4, which gives us the square root of 20, or excuse me, 56. And again, we have perfect squares within here. We know that 56 is 8 times 7, or we can think of this as 2 times 4 times 7, where 4 is that perfect square. So this simplifies to 2 times the square root of 14. So again, to help us with simplifying our calculations, let's go ahead and we'll find the product of these two magnitudes. So we have the magnitude of vector u, multiplied by the magnitude of vector v. So this is equal to 5 times the square root of 2, and we multiply this by 2 times the square root of 14. So 5 times 2 gives us 10, multiplied by the square root of 2 times 14, which is 28. And again, we notice we have perfect squares within these factors. We know, of course, that 28 is 4 times 7, where 4 is a perfect square. So this simplifies to 20, times the square root of 7. So we have all of the pieces that we need, and we're ready finally to compute that angle. So we have, again, we found theta to be inverse cosine of the dot product of u and v divided by the magnitude of vector u multiplied by the magnitude of vector v. So plugging in what we just found, we have inverse cosine of negative 12 divided by 20 times the square root of 7. And 20 and negative 12 are both divisible by 4. So we can simplify this to negative 3 over 5. For a beautiful final answer here, the angle between these two vectors, u and v, is defined as inverse cosine of negative 3 divided by 5 times the square root of 7. 
And so this is how we'll leave our answer, especially if it's on a quiz or an exam, because we're not allowed to use calculators.